Hello everybody, today we will discuss the solidification behavior of additive manufacturing process. So, definitely we have already gone through the solidification of the casting process and solidification of the oiling processes having some similarity or similar kind of the parameters also we can utilize to explain the solidification behavior of the additive manufacturing process. But before going to the actual topic of the solidification process behavior, we need to know little bit about the additive manufacturing processes. So, what is additive manufacturing process? Uh, basically, it is a layer by layer deposition process and we create the three dimensional object and it is a with the addition of the material, but that is why it is not by subtractive methods. So, basically we are not removing any materials in this particular process. So, in that sense there is effective utilization of the material in the additive manufacturing process. So, first step of the additive manufacturing process we need to create some three dimensional object and some computer interface is required to slicing of this uh, object or component and using particular uh, the software or strategy we can do the slicing that is basically equivalent to the thickness of a deposited layer. So, once layer by layer deposition is done, so definitely that might be having some kind of the surface roughness issues is there. So, to remove or to overcome this surface roughness we need to go through some kind of the post processing. So, basically it is a finishing operation and sometimes we can do the heat treatment operation also to improve the uh, properties of the material. So, therefore, uh, in this arrangement although it is a computer control, but we need to need some kind of the three dimensional movement at least control x y z movement of the table or some kind of the heat source in the other way we can we can move the heat source also. So, mostly we can utilize the laser. So, that is required or we can sometimes we can utilize the robotic hand also for the movement of the this heat source or the with the different degrees. So, therefore, with this most of the 3D metal printing or additive manufacturing process is basically selective laser melting till date the developed has too, too much of developed is happened for this particular process. And in this case in selective laser melting process the transformation of the from raw material in the form of a powder and converted to the final uh, product either through sintering operation or through the this melting operation melting process. So, the raw materials can be utilized not only in the form of a powder, we can utilize in the form of a wire also. So, using when we are trying to utilize the wire usually that is wire our additive manufacturing process has been developed. So, we will discuss first the types of the additive manufacturing process, then we will try to look into the solidification behavior in pertinent the solidified structure also associated with the this uh, additive manufacturing process. So, major additive manufacturing process is basically the we can classify in the three different category one is the liquid based, powder based and the solid based. So, liquid based means the raw material in the form of liquid, powder means in the raw material in the form of powder and solid based the uh, raw material in the form of a uh, solid. So, if we this it is the very basic classification and then liquid based processes are usually the stereolithography process, jetting system and direct uh, light processing. Basically, all these processes are uh, liquid we just uh, import the with the scan with the laser and then and this particular uh, that uh, we can use the focus laser and that part is basically after scanning this basically changes from liquid phase to uh, solid phase solidify or some curing is required uh, this particular solid component and then we go for the uh, and, and next once one layer is done then we go for the next layer. So, this is the uh, usually the liquid based additive manufacturing process. Apart from this powder based there are so many different techniques has been developed and this are uh, selective laser sintering, three dimensional printing these are different names, fuse metal deposition system, electron beam melting, selective laser melting, we can the selective masking sintering even selecting inhibition sintering, electrophotographic layer manufacturing and high speed sintering. So, basically we can see the powder based technology is either sintering we are following or the melting of the powder a uh, deposited powder. So, these are the uh, powder different powder based technologies has been developed. Apart from this solid based means is the fused deposition modeling or sheet stacking technology. 
So, fuse deposition modeling I means we can use the solid wire the melt and the in the part of the nozzle and deposit the material and sometimes we can use the we can cut the seat at the desired shape and the stacking of the seat uh, along with the some machining operation we can perform the additive manufacturing process. So, these are overview of the different types of the manu additive manufacturing process, but our focus is not exactly the looking into types of the or technology in the additive manufacturing process, rather basic understanding of the uh, different additive manufacturing process and what uh, that has been linked or that has been following some kind of the uh, this uh, solidification behavior associated with the process. So, we are basically dealing with the the melting of the this additive manufacturing process where the raw material is basically melted. So, this in that case either it can be powder based technology or it can be the solid wire based these are the most widely used the, the raw materials for the additive manufacturing where we can find out the melting and subsequent solidification of the component. Now, see uh, different way also. So, broadly additive manufacturing technology is basically the seven group if you see the different technologies is there, but the group in principle it is having the dip seven different types of the groups. So, one is the binder jetting another is the directed energy deposition then material extraction extrusion material jetting powder bed fusion seed lamination and bat polymerization actually few are the additive manufacturing process is applicable for the polymeric material and few is the applicable both polymeric material as well as the metallic material. So, we are looking for the processes where we can handle the metallic material. So, in that case our interest will be on the directed energy deposition process and the powder bed fusion process and these two particular processes will try to understand the solidification behavior of the uh, additive manufacturing process. So, once we know that these are the different seven groups are additive manufacturing processes there, but most common methods for producing the layers in the 3D printing is that SLA or stereolithography process it is actually very uh, old process and this process is applicable not for the metallic material. Then fuse deposition modeling is there, but selective laser melting, selective laser sintering and the directed direct metal deposition process. So, these are the most commonly used the additive manufacturing or 3D printing process. In this case the we will be discussing the selective uh, laser melting and direct metal deposition these are the two processes we will try to discuss uh, uh, in, the, in this particular uh, course or this particular uh, module. Now, to understand the how it works the powder bed fusion additive manufacturing process if we follow the figure first then here you can see that we have one laser system and of course the similar kind of system can be used either in principle the sintering operation or we can use the melting operation. So, in this case we have the laser laser source and there is a scanning system is there such that very focused laser can interact with the workpiece or powder material in this cases because powder bed fusion is the raw material in the form of a powder. So, there is a uh, stacking of the powder and then there is a delivery of the powder system on the with the actual component the in the fabrication component here you can see that that fabrication piston that means we can we can move in the downward direction. So, once the the desired laser is scanned with the particular this 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 part is basically is the or melted part, but this other part is the loose powder. So, this loose powder they can use as a support uh, to the uh, melted part. So, basically we are looking for the particular size shape of the component and here once we fill the one layer then we scan with the layer and uh, after scanning we just this particular depending upon the path that path will be melted and the subsequent sub after melting we follow the solidification process and then we will get the one layer deposition. The one it is done then with the fabrication piston is the make the down move the downward direction exactly equal to the layer thickness what we can pre decide what can be the layer thickness. So, the layer thickness we move downward then that layer thickness will the again fill with the completely filling with the powder and then we put the selective laser at the selective path only we can uh, focus the laser and we can melt this uh, component. So, this if we follow layer by layer then we will get the complete component complete uh, product. So, this is called selective laser melting process uh, selective laser melting 
as well as the this is also called the powder bed fusion basically with the then the bed is filled with the powder and the in the selective position we can melt it and we can follow the solidification and but the same things repeated over the layer by layer then finally we are getting the uh, component so here the steps are like that the slicing is done along with the support mechanism so slicing means basically we need to do a complete three dimensional component product first step is the do the slicing such that we can decide the what can be the layer thickness so that means the slicing operation decides the layer thickness and all this information is stored in the in a in a computer and then we can give the instruction from the computer to to add for the required the the thickness of the material and the as well as the the scanning path of the laser system of course all the whole system can be done at the inert environment to create a continuous supply of the gas such as usually nitrogen we can utilize so that inert environment can be created and the contamination of the product might not be there because anyway it is uh, passes through the melting and solidification process so that's why inert gas environment is maintained and then each slice or layer is realized the following steps basically we have already explained that each layer the table lowers equal to the equivalent to the layer thickness then a uh, layer of the powder is filled as per the layer thickness so once it is done then we scan the beam laser beam so such that required region is basically selectively melted that required part in the, in the which part is as per the size of the component that that particular part with the scan by the laser so therefore that part will be the selectively melted and remaining powder act as a, the support to the complete structure so once all layers are made then table rises completely revealing the block of the cake with the part inside so so basically the cake the part inside this is the actual part if you see and remaining are the supported by the loose powder and then once the surrounding loose powder is uh, remove using the suitable uh, brushes and then this loose powder can also be reusable so once we remove this powder then we will get the we can bring the uh, component so this is the uh, very basic steps associated with the powder bed fusion process and at the same time the we can selective laser melting process associated with this now there is other type of the this uh, the second type of the uh, um, this uh, additive manufacturing that is called the directed energy deposition so in this case what happens that powder as the laser source is direct projected on the workpiece so on when the powder is projected on the workpiece at the same time it is melting and deposited on the substrate so therefore it is not necessary for the stacking of the powder uh, over a bed that steps can be eliminated so effectively in this case we don't need any kind of the extra powder to support the structure so at the simultaneously when you focus when you projecting the powder and at the at the same time projecting the laser on the substrate and it's melting as well as the depositing one particular position so this is laser based system and this uh, this particular process is known as the directed energy deposition process so similar kind of things we can utilize any kind of the fusion welding process so usually for we can take an examples so uh, this is laser system here you can use the laser as a this thing and laser as well as the plus powder is the raw material but similar strategy can also be followed in any kind of the wire based technology that means for example we can use say plasma that we know we know that plasma are coiling process so there is a source of the plasma you can use that as a heat source then we can supply some uh, feeding uh, material so in the form of a wire so wire is supplied here and plasma gas generated the plasma heating here on the on this thing and this it try to melt the supplied wire and the deposited on the substrate and once we move the control way we can move the heat source this plasma source then as per the path of this we can design the different kind of the different com complex product but here you observe in this figure that there is a deposition by layer by layer one layer is done then we go for the next layer third layer so in that case raw material is in the form of a wire we can utilize and plasma source can be utilized as a heating the sub, uh, the wire and then depositing on the substrate so even for the gas metal arc welding process where the wire 
uh, fitting is the int uh, integral part of the system that can also be directly used uh, for the deposition of the material over the shafted and can be converted to the additive manufacturing process over the controller if we move the either the bed the substrate material or we can move the the torch welding torch so this the both the cases it's a since uh, we are not using the any support extra support material initially not necessary initially fill the one cavity that is not required so this process is known as the directed energy deposition process so here three basic steps of the dd process is like that creation of the small melt pool by using the focus laser either laser it can be the electron beam or it can be the electric arc depending upon the type or nature of the uh, this uh, technology associated with the additive manufacturing process then once it is done then inject injection of the build material build material can be either in the form of a powder or in the form of a wear into the melt pool so that is the the steps second step and then third step is the generation of the synchronized motion of the heat source metal injection and the substrate to develop the desired part geometry that means we can move the both we can move the the substrate material as well as the heat source that means the plasma source or the laser source here or along with the this thing uh, this uh, uh, the uh, this heat source the metal injection system also so that combining moving all these things and uh, either one only moving the bed keeping torch as a fixed or other also moving both bed as well as the torch also so for example we can give the movement xy movement for the table but z movement by the torch or torch can be uh, integrated with one kind of the robotic hand so in that cases the control movement is more easily possible using the robotic hand also so all the possibilities are there to develop the uh, this particular system but anyway this is directed energy system and that is uh, raw metal can be used either in the form of a powder or in the form of a wear now here also sometimes we can see that we having some understanding of the different fusion welding processes so then this fusion welding process where it is a subject to any kind of the material deposition that can be converted to the metal printing process or additive manufacturing process so here you can see that uh, this metal transfer in the arc welding process if we understand the gas metal arc welding process metal transfer can be there or even we can it is uh, because gas metal arc welding process the the wire deposition is the integral part of the system but in case of the gas tanks arc welding the plasma arc welding we can externally supply the wire material and using this particular source to melt the wire also so even for laser also we can use the laser system and they supply the wire also continuously supply the we can control the supply of the wire and that wire can be melted by the laser by the laser heating process so therefore in this case here the one existing the welding machine can be converted to the 3d printing process with the uh, at very low cost also and this work the people have done this work and this this several development is also going on in this particular direction but nowadays the uh, mode of metal transfer of the gmaw is basically um, it's a control uh, but uh, it can be more control in the different way and for that purposes that the cmt has been developed coal metal transfer which, which is the advanced version of the gas metal arc welding process and they are had advancement in the in the sense that the more control way metal transfer happen in case of the cmt process so therefore in this case nowadays cmt process is more easier to implement in the uh, in the form of a additive manufacturing process as compared to the gas metal arc welding process we can see although cmt process is the new form of the gas metal arc welding process but it is not exactly the coal process because metal transfer happens at relatively low temperature so that's why it is called the coal metal transfer process uh, here you can see that how this arc welding or maybe the um, can be converted to the additive manufacturing process from this figure it is very clear if you see there is a movement of the wear uh, the torch is movement i think using some robotic hand and as uh, gradually it is movement is there and the metal deposition also there and of course path if you see initially it is a square cross section and now it's a cross section is gradually changing the deposition path and if you see there is a gradually changing so it becomes the circular section and from the figure we can see that how their continuous deposition of the metal is there control way and we can 
make the layer by layer deposition and you can get this particular component particular developed where there is a change of the cross section is possible which is sometimes very difficult to make using the other conventional manufacturing processes. Uh, uh, in that sense it is very uh, maybe it is a control way if we do the metal transfer then different complex shapes can also be possible to generate using the additive manufacturing process. Now, you are talking about the CMT process which is advanced version of the gas metal arc welding process and nowadays CMT is widely utilized for the development of the additive manufacturing process. So, in principle it actually works in the reduced current and the some retracting the weld wire at a short circuit condition. So, we create the short circuit and using some mechanical system with the retract the wire and the at that time whatever during the short circuit the metal is transferred. Uh, to the or metal is deposited to the substrate material. So, therefore, initially it was developed very thin materials and with the strict control of the parameters, but nowadays it is one of the most important options for the development of the 3D metal printing technology. But in principle, the CMT process differs from GMAW in, the, in terms of the mechanical droplet detachment method. Actually, the droplet detachment when there is a short circuit is created with the detach the the arc would detach the wear uh, from the short circuit condition using some mechanical system and that can be done with a very high frequency also. So, that is the only difference. So, it means that some mechanical system is utilized to detach the or to influence the control of the metal transfer uh, to the substrate material. So, that is why CMT is more applicable or widely used for the additive manufacturing process. So, of course, it is a kind of the we can say this is the in the under category of the wear arc additive manufacturing process. Now, overall if you see the additive manufacturing process when dealing with the uh, metallic components, uh, we can see that uh, these are the different process one is the powder bed fusion we usually use handling the powder component and where the usually laser or electron beam is the heat source in this case. Second was the ORP directed energy deposition. So, although it is called directed energy deposition, but in this cases raw material is in the form of a wire. Other is the powder feed directed energy deposition. It is also directed energy deposition, but here the feeding of the powder is required in this particular process. Now, fusion welding of the powder based technology is either based on the laser or electron mostly has been developed, but in this case a well defined pre programming path is required. So, path designing is one of the important aspect associated with this, this additive manufacturing process. But if you see in the powder based technology, the what are the different parameters that actually influence for the development of the particular component or the uh, uh, particular component. So, one is the focused beam diameter that is very important that how precisely you can make a melt pole that depends on the that focused beam diameter of the laser. Second is the scanning speed is also another parameter. It's a very high speed or moderate speed we are following. It actually uh, depends decides the uh, structure uh, cooling rate associated with this uh, with this process. So definitely that's why scanning speed is very important. Then powder particle size, binding of the different powder particle size is entirely depends purity of the powder and the particle size also. To coarse particles, maybe it's a, it's a, or uniform distribution of the particles are the parameters to consider with the very good binding of the uh, between the powders. Then powder flow rate basically decides the metal deposition rate. It's a directly uh, di directly linked with the powder flow rate. Then what kind of the shielding gas flow rate that is also having some influence on the product also whether it is nitrogen, whether it is argon or some other shielding gas we can utilize. And shielding gas flow rate also influence to some extent the solidification behavior, behavior also and finally the microstructure of the component and of course how the solidification occurs, solidification occurs under very high cooling rate or solidification occurs very low cooling rate all this matters uh, to finally decides the structure microstructure of the deposited component or is there any formation of the defects associated with the all these parameters in additive manufacturing process. So, overall we can see actually additive manufacturing there are so many control parameters and to be successfully developed a defect free uh, component. So, that is why we need to know the what is the 
effect of the different parameters and how is actually influence the solidification behavior. So, solidification behavior is more important in the sense that it actually decides the any any kind of the defect is there or not or the strength of the microstructure good microstructure or very bad structure is usually forms that actually decided by the solidification. That is why you need some, some understanding of the solidification behavior associated with the additive manufacturing for metallic components. Now, one typical behavior which is different from the other manufacturing process or welding processes is that that typical thermal cycle in additive manufacturing process since it is a layer by layer deposition process. So, we can get this kind of the time temperature profile or time temperature history associated with the additive manufacturing process. So, it is like that if we fixed one particular sp uh, space over uh, we are showing one particular space there is a how the temperature is varying if you see there is a cyclic uh, way the temperature is actually varying. So, it is a increases fast and then decreases again it is increases uh, then decreases like that there is a continuous changing. So, basically melting remelting also happens associated once the melting done on the one layer then some part of melting also done from the bottom layer also such, such that it can binding of the or interface binding between these two layers is much more uh, prominent when we can allow some kind of the remelting of the next layer. So, for that purposes we can see that there is a continuously changing of the, the temperature profile associated with the additive manufacturing process. So, here I can see uh, here the temperature profile will completely different from the uh, welding process. So, that is because this kind of the cyclical temperature change associated with the one particular position it actually influences the microstructure of the uh, component. So, that is why uh, we need to know that how the temperature profile looks like in case of the additive manufacturing process. Now, once you understand the solidification is actually uh, decides the final structure of a additive manufacturing component, we will try to understand the solidification behavior not explicitly some experimental measurement is really very difficult, but some few, uh, some uh, looking into some analogy the structure and the post processing analysis we can we can relate the how the solidification usually occurs associated with the uh, additive manufacturing process or even we can take the help of a some kind of the numerical model to understand the different parameters and the edit the different parameters associated with the solidification of the additive manufacturing process. So, here we will see uh, all this try to explain by bringing some kind of the examples of the different types of the materials and un try to understand the their solidification in terms of the some 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 sample calculation as well as the like looking into the micro final microstructure we can try to relate the solidification behavior uh, of the additive manufacturing process and the final structure associated with the uh, an, a component so definitely to do that so i am just here we just trying to uh, present some basic understanding of the additive manufacturing process which is useful to understand the solidification behavior of that so definitely additive manufacturing is a identical to a kind of the multi pass welding process. So, we can expect resembles or the structure associated with the multi pass welding process uh, more or less to some extent it can be the similar type of the behavior you can expect in the additive manufacturing process. But the key difference between the welding and metal additive manufacturing process is that in this case the complex thermal condition exist and very uh, influence of the thermal conditions. Uh, in the very localized area within the geometry we can observe and in that cases we can see that complex thermal mechanical conditions and the numerous process parameters they are having the ability to influence the process parameters and complex thermal conditions uh, they actually influence the localized temperature gradient because solidification when you try to understand the solidification, we need to understand what the solidification front moves or the stability of the solidification front because stability actually decides the what kind of the structure is usually form. It can be the planar interface or it is a kind of cellular or dendritic structure, columnar structure or equiax kind of the structure is usually form. So, all depends on the temperature gradient and the growth rate associated with the additive manufacturing process. So, that is why the difference from the oiling process is that here the very localized uh, with the, the localized position within the oil geometry the thermal conditions can change also and we, we, we can we will try to look into what kind of the changes usually occurs in the very localized position. So, therefore, 
already have seen that additive manufacturing is typically represent the repeating heating and the repeated heating and the cooling cycles that we have ob already observed in the last slide that how the temperature uh, time temperature variation we can observe associated with the additive manufacturing process. So, some point of time some extreme solidification conditions is usually exist in additive manufacturing process because most of the additive manufacturing process we can expect the very high uh, rapid cooling. And in case of the powder based technology there is a rapid movement of the laser scanning. So, that means laser scanning speed is usually very high. So, that actually influences the, the solidification that uh, cooling rate associated with the additive manufacturing process. But most common additive manufacturing technology based on the melting and subsequent solidification of the metal powder layer using laser source. So, basically most of the powder based technology is most widely used the laser as a source we can utilize. So, in the sense that when you are talking of the powder based additive manufacturing technology is basically uh, we, we can assume that mostly using the in terms of the laser as a heat source not the other. But few cases we can observe that some technology as development associated with the electron beam. So, here high speed of the high laser scanning speed actually create very small mail pool. Mail pool can be small but that solidify actually re very rapidly that means solidification rate is very rapid in when the laser scanning speed is very high and, and usually it follows in case of the, the laser based powder based additive manufacturing processes. So, therefore, solidification structure is basically highly transient solidification conditions exist is when the laser scanning speed is very high in the powder based additive manufacturing processes. So, all these factors we need to take care of that to understand the uh, basic solidification behavior associated with the additive manufacturing process. So, here if you look into the solidification of a directed energy deposition process we see that how it looks like we see the melting the solidification path. So, layer different layer we can see the, their, their profile heat source profile are different in this case is path 2 uh, sorry layer 2, layer 4, layer 6 and layer 8 we see that how the temperature variation is there definitely it creates kind of the molten pool what we observe in case of the oiling fusion oiling process also similar kind of the molten pool, but usually in powder base the size of the molten pool is actually very small. But at the same time you can see that once one layer is done next layer we move it then some remelting occurs in the previous layer. So, that is also having so then re-solidification occurs in this particular uh, component. So, that is why it becomes more complex uh, in associated with this thing. So, of course also not only that it depends on the path path means whether we are moving only one unidirectional laser screening or it is a bidirectional laser scanning uh, we are following. So, or we following the linear path or we are following the curved path all actually influence for the solidification behavior of the directed energy deposition process. But what we try to understand in case of the, um, the solidification process one is the prediction of the temperature distribution first this is very important because until and unless we are not estimate the temperature distribution during this process we will not be able to understand the solidification behavior also. Then it is also having some influence the shape and size of the molten pool also and the heat affected zone that is also having some influence. Then how much time the solidification time taking for a particular metal that is also there. Even if you try to analyze this thing every time the metal is deposited over the another layer. So, some mass addition is also there in the solution domain that also need to uh, take care to develop one particular model to understand the solidification or heat transfer phenomena. Then of course, fluid flow analysis influence the actually enhance the calculation all calculation associated with the temperature distribution because heat conduction model sometimes may not get the very correct result associated with the uh, uh, this uh, in additive manufacturing process because when we try to look into uh, this um, the incorporate the fluid flow also it it actually uh, reduced temperature distribution is much more uniform if we as compared to the only when when we are considering only the heat conduction equation. So, definitely in that sense the fluid flow is always incorporated to uh, the more precisely calculate the temperature distribution and the and, and the zone. So, of course, all this some material uh, behavior is material specific. So, some sort of understanding apart from the temperature distribution, the metal behavior, metal properties is also important 
uh, to understand the solidification behavior even for example the metal specific mean if surface active element is presence is there that actually influence the oil pool shape and size also and once it is influence the shape and size the temperature distribution can be different in absence of the surface active element. So, therefore, all these matters to for directly we are looking for the temperature distribution because once we know the correct estimation of temperature distribution will be rightly predict the solidification behavior of the additive manufacturing process. So, here some 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 kind of uh, uh, this understanding when uh, directed energy deposition is there uh, for the powder actually. So, some analysis can be done so individually tracking of the powder particle. So, if we just focus on the uh, powder particle what happens to the powder particle. So, here you can see that how they are different in the sense that as compared to the uh, analysis as a bulk. So, when you trick the powder 1 and 2 and you see this is the powder is uh, this through the nozzle powder is coming and laser beam also focus on this thing such that powder is passes to the to the this uh, laser zone and then when it passes through that laser zone then it will be melting during this point and after that it will be deposited. So, the path are powder 1 and powder 2 are different. So, powder 1 much more time within under the laser as compared to the powder 2. So, therefore, if you track the what is the status time versus temperature for the powder 1 and 2 we can see their melting time are different in this case. So, one can reach to melting point because sufficient time is under the laser. So, it promote the melting of the powder uh, 2, but it may not happen so in case of the powder 1 powder 1 may not melt because although it is passes by very small part small time it is passes through the laser for that is why it will not be able to melt. So, I mean to say that when we exactly tracking the powder particle method and interacting with the laser we can see that some powder is immediately melt and some powder is partially melt and some powder uh, does not melt at all. So, all this having some influence on the solidification behavior associated with this thing if we analyze individual uh, tracking powder as a in the in the particle method. So, therefore, here you can see some understanding the particle can reach the velocity can go up to the 5 meter per second. So, once we look into very small comp this thing all actually to understand the as a gross the solidification behavior then of course, this powder particle is also having uh, some influence whether it is completely melting or the if it is a too much of melting or partially melting or even not melting at all. So, in a DD process we try to look into the shape is something like that the profile deposited profile can be like but the deposited profile can be controlled. We can see that there are three different profile one A, B and C and that profile it entirely depends on the uh, different process parameters associated with that. So, therefore, the profile can be different. So, diagram of this thing and it is a individual layer and there is a track on the system and it actually influence the uh, it is actually influenced by the uh, process parameter uh, in this case. So, this is the most desirable if the aspect ratio are different in these three cases. I mean to say that this can also be controlled the deposition track phase also and of course, the deposition track are different shape and size their solidification as a gross uh, will be can be different in these three different cases. So, that is why we need to look into that what kind of the, the free surplus profile we can produce uh, in a particular technology and here the uh, the controlling parameter the different process parameters associated with the uh, this uh, powder based deposition process. Now, here some example the solidification for the DED process. So, here see the some simulation is actually performed and here for the titanium powder uh, titanium alloy and particle size vary between the 60 to 110 micrometer and we can see that the once we perform the simulation we can see that what way the, the growth actually occurs. So, substrate stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3 if we see that how growth occurs. So, here is basically we can see there is a columnar of the equx transition to the grain structure is determined that we know the transition from the columnar to the equx it actually depends on the g by r ratio g is the temperature gradient r is the growth rate and we know the growth rate is compatible if you even for the oiling process we have observed the growth rate is basically compatible with the in this case it is a laser scanning speed the what with the solidification front is moving which is try to comply with the the welding speed or in this case the laser scanning speed. So, definitely 
the R is usually high associated with the uh, powder based technology when you use the high laser scanning speed. Now definitely the uh, objective when you try to understand the solidification behavior we know the G and R are the solidification parameters. So, basically the mode of the solidification uh, we can estimate by the G by R ratio that we, we uh, this is just an um, the review of these things that we know the G and R uh, we always calculate what is the G by R ratio and G into R is the cooling rate basically that will decide the whether it is a fine structure or the core structure. So, these two parameters we usually estimate. So, G is the uh, here in this case G by R value determine whether it is columnar structure equiax transition structure or the transition from the columnar to equiax usually occurs in the uh, during this process. Now, in this particular process uh, depending upon the process condition we have utilized in this case we see the R is usual measure is around 1.687 millimeter per second. So, this is the growth rate or we can say the solidification rate uh, R value. So, here when the try to understand the how growth occurs the stage 1 in this case we can see the uh, uh, actually initially the substrate this is the powder and this is the uh, domain about to fill this domain and then stage 1 we can see that temperature gradient the with the application of the heat flow in interacting with the laser with the powder in that case the temperature gradient is smaller near the side surface. So, side surface the temperature gradient is 2.2 into 10 to the power 5 per degree, centi degree centigrade per meter and temperature gradient near the center equal to 3.5 into 10 to the 5 degree centigrade per meter. So, definitely at the center the temperature gradient is much more I mean to say that here the mode is G by R. So, when temperature gradient is much more R is constant. So, G by R is, is higher. So, if G is more then uh, it is higher it means that temperature gradient near the center is much more as compared to the near the as compared to the side wall. So, when G by R is, is much more definitely we can expect that gradually can uh, we, we can expect G, R, G by R ratio it is transition from the that uh, center part we can expect kind of the the columnar kind of the structure. And when the low values of the G by R it is basically close to this wall in that cases we can find the, the kind of the equiax kind of the structure and that you can observe in the stage 2 and stage 3 also that at the center point there gradually there is a formation of the columnar structure, but near the wall uh, it is there is a formation of the equiax structure. So, it entirely depends on the G by R ratio. Now, columnar structure from near the center we can see. Now, uh, this is the one point another point we can see that from stage 1 to stage 2 that when the height the continuous layer by layer deposition is going on. So, Mosi zone is basically is gradually increasing a uh, decreasing sorry decreasing Mosi zone is gradually decreasing between stage 1 when you move from stage 1 to stage 2. So, here you can see that Mosi zone also decreasing this part and at the same time the Mosi zone at the center is low the Mosi zone near the wall is much more. It means that which part the Mosi zone is much more it is expected to have at this particular zone we can expect the equiax kind of the structure the large Mosi zone and as compared to the center. Center this Mosi zone is small there we can expect the columnar structure is usually formed. So, therefore, we can see the Mosi zone decreases with increasing the build height. So, therefore, because the effect of the temperature gradient and due to the under cooling owing to the effect of the temperature gradient under cooling the near the center or uh, over the addition of the layer the Mosi zone is actually decreases. So, therefore, uh, the more towards when the Mosi zone decreases me towards we can expect the height is increasing more expected to having some kind of the columnar structure. And even for the which part of the Mosi zone is much more that part we can expect the equiax structure also. So, side wall also we can see that Mosi zone is much more. So, therefore, we can expect the equiax structure grains near the side surfaces and it becomes smaller also. So, this kind of the analogy we can find out just by looking into the G by R ratio in this particular uh, uh, process. Uh, now, we will try to look into the uh, features of the powder bed fusion additive manufacturing process. So, that last is the powder based uh, process here you can see that of course, uh, LPBF means the laser in this case is laser powder bed fusion process printed part 
and in this cases we can observe this is the usual uh, common thing associated with the any kind of the powder bed fusion process. The metastable phases we can form because of the high rate of the cooling in this case. Sometimes we can form the harm residual stresses, residual stress also we can it also generate. Definitely anisotropic microstructure is also there, some structures also form uh, depending upon the non uniform co cooling uh, other different position also. Porosity is usually formed and some cases the poor surface finish, these are the different issues or defects usually form in the uh, laser based powder bed fusion. So, objective is to how to reduce all this kind of the defects. This is the one information associated with the powder bed fusion. Then formation of the defects definitely is link directly linked with the solidification behavior and that is usually for the small pool over a very uh, short span of the time. So, very small pool is formed there is one aspect solid and another is the very so short span of the time because it is laser is scanning is very high and other it creates a very high rapid cooling also. The cooling rate is very high in this case we can usually the range can be 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 6 degree centigrade per second that much that high much that much of cooling rate usually observed in case of the laser powder based fusion process. So, therefore, so but apart from this thing size of the molten pin also depends on the what is the uh, this thing laser scanning speed and applied heat input. It means that uh, uh, definitely the heat input we can calculate if we uh, incorporate the laser power divided by the velocity. So, P by V that actually indicates the, the heat input per unit length and associated with the uh, this thing uh, any kind of the this uh, um, this uh, powder based additive manufacturing process. So, therefore, the this P by V ratio decides the what is the size of the uh, melt pool associated with this process. So, apart from the melt pool it usually observes very high that already say that high cooling rate when it is associated with the high cooling rate then it is the, the it is also attributed that means associated with the large lateral thermal temperature gradient or thermal gradient. Lateral temperature gradient means that from the center to the edge of the pool, from the center to the edge of the pool that we can expect the uh, lateral the high lateral temperature gradient it, and when it is associated to the high cooling rate. Even for the but in depth wise direction along the depth direction the thermal gradient within the oil pool is little less as compared to the and that is why when the temperature gradient along the depth direction is little less we can expect the. Uh, columnar gain structure as compared to the on the high value of the G by R ratio. So, but in case of the extreme cooling rate there it sometimes extreme cooling rate is sometimes beneficial as in the metallic alloy because the if when the cooling already know this uh, solidification mode and cooling rate we can calculate because cooling rate is very high it means that refinement of the fine grain structure and refinement of the particles is possible associated with the process and even any kind of the microstructure micro constituent phases also the in that cases the particle size can be much less when you follow the high cooling rate associated with the this powder based fusion process. But at the same time when cooling rate is very high that also increase the solid solubility also increases of the alloy and definitely we can expect some super saturated solid solution and super saturation of the parent phase usually occurs. And this is the another aspect uh, for the when we follow the high cooling rate apart from these things this actually induces some kind of segregation introduction of the segregation free microstructure associated with this high cooling rate in case of the powder bit fusion. So, these are the features. So, we started with these are the different defects usually occurs associated with these things, but at the same time some benefit. Uh, for in this case the high cooling rate is usually occurs we can see this thing. So, with reference to these things we will try to understand the uh, different uh, behavior that means solidification behavior of the powder bed fusion process. Now, when you understand the solidification of the powder bed fusion process we need to calculate the energy density. Energy density is calculated basically volumetric energy is the P power divided by V H T V is the scanning speed h equal to hatching space t is the uh, I think t is the uh, uh, layer thickness. So, t is the layer thickness p is the uh, this thing t layer thickness in the uh, the thickness layer thickness direction p is this direction and 
uh, a hatching space is another direction. This is three dimension we multiply this thing we create the that volume. So, P divided by that volume indicates the volume energy density associated with the this uh, powder bed fusion process. Now, definitely stability of the interface is depends on the G by R ratio that we have already discussed G by R ratio and that actually decide whether that stable interface will form or not. So, G by when G by R S is very high in by taking the account because of the high values of the G because R is the uh, more or less uh, comply with the scanning speed also in this case. So, when G value is very high then G by R S is much more G means the temperature gradient is very high. So, it means, means that G by R is the very high value that the planar interface is more stable in this case stable interface planar interface is possible. But when G by R S is low in that case it gradually the stability can be disturbed and the interplanar interface can be transformed to the cellular structure cellular to the uh, columnar and the equivalent kind of the structure is gradually converted and depending upon the G by R value. Now, you, you can calculate G by R value in this particular case G by R it should be if you want to the stable interface if you want to get the condition for the stable interface then it is the G by R should be greater than of ML the mass fraction mass and that C is the eutectic composition C0 is the initial composition of the alloy and this is the diffusivity of the one phase to another phase. Uh, so, therefore, uh, if this is the condition for this thing, but we can estimate the critical values for the G by R ratio is simply estimated G by critical value of the G by R ratio is the equilibrium freezing range uh, for the composition C0 that means that is the initial uh, alloy composition and the diffusivity D that ratio actually decides the, the critical condition to be stable for the planar interface. So, we can calculate now once you calculate the critical value then we can compare uh, with, the, with the other calculated value to understand whether planar interface is stable or not. So, to under understand that we will take an example also. So, for, for example, we consider from the thermodynamic data the critical value of the G by R ratio is calculated for example is that. 4 into 10 to the power 8 degree centigrade second per meter square. Suppose this is calculated from the thermodynamic data available for this particular alloy system and the G by R value standard value. But suppose if we calculate one particular process certain process parameters associated with the, uh, the deposition of this, this part, uh, uh, aluminum silicon alloy uh, powder. In that case in this particular process condition suppose G by R is uh, for this particular material is calculated is like that. 0 0.55 into 10 to the power 8 degree, centri degree centigrade second per meter square. So, it is obvious that this value is less than the critical value. It means that the interface will not be stable. So, when interface will not be stable then it will try to form the formation of the cell structure. It is a formation of the aluminum cells or it can create the dendritic expected in the laser powder bed uh, powder uh, bed fusion process. So, therefore, we can see that once we calculate the critical values of the this uh, stability condition G by R ratio and from the thermodynamic data standard data and one in particular process conditions if we calculate the G by R for the same material then we can compare it with the stable and based on that we can compare whether we can say that planar solid uh, interface is stable or not and if it is not stable the it is less than the critical value in that case then must be it is converted to the cellular structure and then dendritic structure will try to form uh, uh, in this particular process. Similarly also when you uh, powder bed fusion sometimes we can try to use uh, some empirical relation it is also possible to follow to calculate the looking into the inter silicon spacing for uh, in, I am taking example for the aluminum silicon alloy. So, inter silicon spacing K and under cooling with the growth velocity r and the temperature gradient g it can be simply plotted and uh, some constitutive um, some empirical relation can also be expressed like that so lambda is equal to in terms of the a r to the power minus half g to the power minus 1 by 3 similarly delta t can also be calculated b r to the power minus half g to the power minus half so where a and b are the constants and with values and it is actually a constant values are material specific so it can value vary can different material. So, therefore, for the different material uh, we can roughly calculate the R and G value we can fit with the uh, this certain 
curve and based on that so empirically we can calculate uh, this value. So, I mean to say that that this is the one way to calculate the interplanar spacing and the degree of undercooling by using the known values of the R and G in any kind of the material. So, therefore, in this case we can see that it is ex in just, just an example that inter silicon spacing is usually observed in the 7 nanometer in that order and undercooling is around 130 degree centigrade in case of the laser powder bed fusion process for the alloy AL 12 SI that means aluminum silicon alloy for this particular alloy system. So, this just an example that some understanding that these are the order we can expect this thing. So, therefore, I take another uh, example that uh, in this particular process the this data uh, from the data we can uh, uh, this rapid cooling of the melt pool usually form that the cooling rate is usually 1.1 to the 6 degree centigrade per second growth rate is in that order. 140 millimeter per second under cooling is in that order 70 degree centigrade and temperature gradient is in this particular order 7700 degree centigrade per millimeter during laser uh, beam laser powder bed fusion process and in this case we observe with this particular the values of the this growth rate cooling rate all these things we can expect this particular process there is a increasing degree of the super saturation of the silicon in the primary aluminum in this case aluminum phase. So, aluminum is phase is the primary aluminum phase the super saturation of the silicon is usually occurs in this particular uh, conditions which is expected to improve the alloy response to the post heat treatment that means that once we get with this particular process condition these things and we can find out this particular range super saturation of the uh, silicon in the primary aluminum phase occurs then we can get after post processing we can we can improve certain results also certain parameter uh, uh, certain um, properties we can improve uh, after the uh, heat treatment process. So, I mean to say that this type of calculation may be sometimes uh, we can see that whether uh, we can expect some kind of the the response from the post oil heat treatment will occurs or not that can be decided by through this particular uh, calculation. I think uh, that is all this for today. So, we have more on this um, this powder bed fusion the solidification powder bed fiction with by pick, picking up the different examples as well as the solidification beware of the the wire based wire arc additive manufacturing process we will discuss in the uh, another set of the uh, class. So, for the time being thank you very much for your kind attention.